Reed from Corrosion of Conformity, and you're watching The Offering. Okay, you started this long tour uh, one week ago. Yeah, yeah, one week ago. We started in Denver. Yeah. And it's so far? Oh, it's been a blast so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've only, I think that yesterday was our fifth show, something like that. Yeah. So today will be our sixth. But uh, yeah, it's been killer. It's a great lineup. And in a little while, right now it's I Hate God, COC, and VLS. And in a little while, uh, Red Fang are going to take I Hate God's place. Right. So that'd be cool. It's awesome. Yeah. And your new album, No Cross, No Crown, will be That's released. That's right. It's our new album. Yes, finally, new finally. album, right? Will be released on the 12th of yeah. January. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, what inspired you to put together this new album with this lineup after 12 years? Well, yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, well, what happened was when Woody, Mike Dean, and I were doing the kind of nostalgic three piece hardcore version of COC. Uh, the whole time we were doing that, Pepper was calling me up and going, Man, Reed, we gotta do this, we gotta get together, we gotta do a tour. And I was like, Pep, I know, you're on, you're on tour, we're down right now, <laughs> we, can't, we can't do that. So, uh, yeah, anyway, we stayed in touch like every month. We talked to each other and give each other progress reports of what was going on. And um, finally, it got to be a point where down, we're taking some time off, and we had, we had, uh, pretty much toured everywhere with a three-piece and it was perfect so we got together and we booked a, a little European tour to see what it was like and uh, more as a litmus test or barometer to see if fans still dug it you know we're still relevant but and whether we had fun and also importantly whether we got, got along because you know like you said it's been a long time so. yeah but all those things came true we had a blast the fans loved it and and uh, because we'd been playing together for so long that uh, the idea of making an album was just like obvious. Because um, we're good at writing music together. I mean, Woody, I've known Woody since fifth grade. So wow. I've known Woody for a long time. But Woody, Mike, and I started the band at 82. And we really learned, we went from like kind of generic hardcore punk rock to learning how to play our instruments a little bit better. And when we were doing our punk rock thing, Pepper was a fan in New Orleans. We were pen pals. He would write, write to me. Yeah, so he was always on, on the same sea trip. trip. So when he joined the band, it just made total sense. So after we did that tour, and it was just so beautiful and awesome, and uh, yeah, going into the studio. I mean, I think Rollins used to, Sandra Rollins used to say, uh, playing live is the get off. That's what Rollins used to say, playing live. And uh, going to the studio is the documentation of the get off. So we had to go on and document our get off a little bit. So it was actually easy to go back to riding oh, together. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally easy. And we did it with our uh, the same producer we've had for 25 years, I don't know. John Custer, he's done every album of ours since the Blind album, which was 91. So it was like nothing changed. We went back in time. Same producer, so. No, and, and, it, and we weren't, it wasn't. There was no conscious effort to want to sound like one of our albums. This, this is just the way we sound. So did you have a particular idea or um, uh, inspiration for the for how you wanted this album to be? Well, when uh, <laughs> when we were on tour doing the four piece with Pepper singing, mm -hmm. uh, I was on the phone with Monty Connor, the president of Nuclear Blast, the whole time. Um, because he wanted, I think he told me that uh, not only is Deliverance one of his, his favorite COC records, but one of his favorite records, period, of all time. I'm like, damn, Monty. See, so he, he told me early on, I would talk to him every month when we were doing the four piece tour because he wanted it. When he caught wind of that, he wanted to sign it really bad. As a matter of fact, he, he told me he was going to sign it up. Um, so, uh, yeah, when we finally did that deal, I, I promised him that we were going to do. Um, one of the best, if not the best, COC record. And I, I think we did that. I think it's fantastic. I don't know if you heard it all, but... Yeah, I heard a little bit of it. I'm going to review it soon. Oh, uh, uh, yeah? I just got it yesterday. You did, did you? Yeah. Oh, right on. Yeah. So, and now that you're you're actually performing some new songs live, uh, do you mm -hmm. have a favorite? Well, well, 
to date we've only really done we've done wolf named crow we, we rehearsed a couple mm -hmm. but the only one we do live right now is luddite hopefully we'll mix it up but we're, we're like the opening band so we're you know what i mean we're support so we can we only have a finite amount of time, Enough time yeah. yeah so yeah. We'll, we'll add more as the i mean their album's not even out right now so right but once it comes out we got a video for luddite that should be coming out soon too oh okay that will be the third though because you already released the Cast the First Stone oh, and Cast the Name Crow. We, we practiced that one too, yeah. We rehearsed that one, but we haven't played that live yet. Tell us a bit about these songs that you released. We, we wrote a bunch of songs and those Famous. were two of the best. It was just, it was was just obvious. What you felt. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think Pepper wrote the lyrics for those two songs. He's our wordsmith. Mike Dean writes a lot of good lyrics too. I write some lyrics. Yeah. I wrote that song Albatross. Ah, didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So some song uh, you, you play tonight, right? Oh yeah, the we always play. You that. must. Now yeah, after, I play that one. after all these years, uh, uh, what motivates you to continue to make music? What? What motivates you to continue? To Are make you crazy? Music? What else am I gonna do? <laughs> oh, <that> was... <laughs> <laughs> No, we've been doing this since right. we were kids. Yeah, since we were 16. The, we we loved know, it then, we love it now. And we did it back then totally for the love of music because when we were a hardcore punk band, you couldn't make any money. Right. And the biggest bands to the, in the whole wide world to us were Dead Kennedys, Black Flag, Suicidal Tendencies maybe back then. And they didn't make a whole lot of money, not enough to buy a house or anything. And they toured all the fucking time. So the idea of making money at what we were doing was never part of it. It was just for the low of what we were yeah. doing and going out playing. So that, that's what keeps you going. Uh, yeah, we didn't start making money till the early 90s. We were banned for a long time before we started making right. any money. And speaking about those early years, what do you miss about the music scene uh, back then? Yeah, it was a lot more tight-knit back then. Yeah. And it was a different vibe. It was just pre, obviously pre-internet and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I say like Pepper and I were pen pals. <laughs> So I was uh, with Mike Williams from I Hey God, we were pen pals too. Yeah. It's like, I love your album, My Friend I, please come to New Orleans and play. So there was like a community thing going on with the different scenes. And I was the promoter for the punk shows in Raleigh. So, uh, you know, there was a correspondence between me and the bands that wanted to play Raleigh. And then I'd get scoop from all those bands. And we all became friends and the whole United States was a big happy family. So Except for the Nazi it. skinheads, they didn't like us. <laughs> they always hated us for some reason. I don't know why. But uh, yeah, no, I miss I miss that part, the community part. I mean, there's still there's still obviously a good scene where you guys wouldn't be here, but but it's it's a lot different than it was. Yeah. It's a bit smaller, but right? so back to Corozo conformity. What are your plans after this big tour? It's a long tour. Yeah. Huh? It's like 45, 40 two almost months. Like, yeah, it's two months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're gonna do a bunch of festivals this summer, and then we're gonna plan a hopefully go to South America again, hopefully go to Japan or Australia, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I've never been to Australia. Those guys have, but uh, yeah, stuff like that. Obviously, do a, our own headlining tour of the states and Canada, oh. stuff like that. I mean, we want obviously we want to stay out as long as we can because we want to support this album. So you like you want to focus completely on this current lineup. No, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yes. So you might even do another album or something. Oh, we're definitely gonna do another. Yeah. Album. So you have that. Well, hopefully, hopefully, it's a little while away. Hopefully, we stay out. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Congratulations on the new album and enjoy the rest of the tour.